So you're playing this Thursday night showdown slate, right? Well, so am I, and I've already researched it for five hours, so you do not have to. And now these are my interests, my wants and avoids for this Thursday night game. And yes, the interests are back for all the OG viewers. We have Trevor Lawrence, let's start it up with, at $11,400, the most expensive player on the slate by a wide margin. And look, he's been must-see TV. Lawrence is coming off of yet again another massive game and a comeback win in overtime against the Cowboys. Over 300 yards, four touchdowns. He's now done this. Three plus TDs, 300 plus yards in three of his last four games he's similar to the 2021 joe burrow breakout is what lawrence is doing right now and maybe we'll find his spot in the playoffs now this week he has arguably his most difficult matchup of the year facing the jets top three secondary led by rookie sauce gardner now with all that said if we pull up a part of the dfs blueprint right here trevor lawrence is still my highest projected player by nearly two points so of course he's in play but as we go through this you'll notice that i'm not a slam dunk on lawrence he is just an x for me which means a maybe somebody i'm interested in but not prioritizing now though let's move to one of his wide receivers in Zay Jones. Zay Jones is a really fair price point at $8,200. And a lot of people are going to immediately say this is way too cheap and probably over owned Zay Jones is what I'm seeing early on. Because look, this is what this dude just did. Eight targets, three touchdowns, over 100 yards, the highest scoring wide receiver on the week was Zay Jones last week. And he did it against a good secondary in Dallas, but this is a much different secondary, and in my opinion, a better secondary. So Zay Jones plays 30% of the time on the left side of the field and 35% of the time on the right. So he's primarily nearly 70% of the time an outside wide receiver. Now that's a concern because Sauce Gardner plays 84% of the time on the left side of the field. So he'll see a lot of sauce in this one, but he'll also see DJ Reed, who's been great in his own right, playing 90% of the time on the right side of the field. So one of the most difficult matchups, if not the most difficult matchup for Zay Jones this year. The expectations are through the roof because of what he did last week, but now an awful spot. So in my opinion right now, even at this favorable price point, yeah, he's definitely in play, but he's picking up too much ownership for me to want to go to him in the captain spot or be over the field on him and jumping for joy as a leverage play. Now, next up is a player we start to get some value on, and that's $4,800 Elijah Moore from the Jets, who finally had a good game. It wasn't a great game, but a good game with Zach Wilson. Earned seven targets, put up over nine fantasy points. I mean, this is getting us somewhere, especially at this cheaper price tag. And he has things going for him this week. He'll face the Jaguars, who rank 28th in coverage. And honestly, you could tell me right now that they're the worst secondary in the league if you wanted to put a snapshot for this week right now they are atrocious and elijah moore plays about 70 percent of the time on the outside garrett wilson holds down the slot most of the time which means he's going to face trey herndon who is bottom 10 in coverage amongst every single cornerback over 100 cornerbacks in the nfl this year great spot for elijah so right now i'm actually in on elijah moore and this can either go up or down depending on the status of his teammate Corey davis who is 5600 missed the last game with a concussion if Corey davis is in yeah a little bit less shine for elijah moore but Corey Davis becomes a good play. So I like Corey Davis if he indeed plays in this one. If he's out, well, we can talk more about that momentarily. Because right now we got to talk about the $7,600 tight end. This is an expensive price tag for a tight end, but man, Evan Ingram continues to pay off. He goes for 40 plus points last week. Then this past week, he plays 60 of a possible 70 snaps, which is his second highest on the year. And this led to yet again, another great game. 10 targets, over 14 fantasy points, eight catches for the dude. He's averaging 11 targets per game as a tight end. His last three games leads every single tight end in the league. And now now this week he'll take on the former first round pick from almost a decade ago at this point out of alabama cj mosley who's a little bit undersized around 230 pounds and allows a 70 percent catch rate to tight ends this year it's a good spot for evan ingram now i'm saying all these positive things so do i want to play him well we have to factor in the ownership and his price tag well evan ingram is still one of the most expensive plays in the slate but i only have him projected for 8.8 .8 points in this matchup a reminder it is a difficult secondary to be playing against his ownership is high with his price tag being high which is a great recipe for me to normally say you know what i'm going to be a avoiding Evan Ingram here specifically because of that price tag. Again, this is if you're building one lineup, if you're building 20, 50, or 150, you're going to have exposure to Evan Ingram. Okay, next up is a wide receiver from the Jaguars who I believe is being overlooked. And that's going to be Christian Kirk, who's being overlooked by Zay Jones, even though Kirk is continuing to play really well. And now Kirk in this one is going to have the best matchup. He plays out of the slot where he'll see this man right here, Michael Carter II. No, not the running back, the slot cornerback who plays 93% of the time out of the slot. He's not a terrible cornerback, but he's, I would say, the worst of the best here, if you will. And very quiet this year christian kirk ranks third in slot snaps and third in red zone targets amongst every single wide receiver this dude has major upside you want your good wide receivers like kirk playing out of the slot because they have a massive advantage using the entire field and it's not like kirk is playing bad this past week he earns 10 more targets he goes for 92 yards he now has seven or more targets in eight straight games an underrated extremely strong season a top 20 wide receiver season for christian kirk now he's very expensive here at ten thousand two hundred dollars but because of this because of where he's sandwiched in between the quarterbacks he's picking up lower owners 
ownership. So I actually think Christian Kirk is a nice leverage play on this slate. Again, he's not somebody that I'm jumping up and down to put in my captain spot, but from a, a flex standpoint, I'm liking him a lot. And then we can talk about his teammate, Travis Etienne, who finally got a good matchup. And in that good matchup, he went for 100 yards on the ground, 125 plus total yards. He looked good. He even left the game for a little while, commanded 21 of the 23 running back touches, the clear RB1. If you don't believe me, just look at the snap counts. He played 51 of 70 snaps. The next closest guy was Jermichael Hasty, who barely cracked 20% of the snaps. This was the Travis Etienne show. Now in the past, he's had some really weird things going on. He had two blowouts where he didn't see as much usage. He got injured where he was limited in some games, and then he left the game and only played a couple of snaps, and then he had difficult matchups. Finally, last week, it was a good matchup in a game that stayed close, but now it's not the same. Sure, the game is only a couple point spread, but he's facing a borderline top five run defense in the New York Jets, and his problem is that his offensive line ranks bottom five in run blocking. So a lot of people are saying, what's wrong with Travis Etienne? No. When their offensive line faces a good run defense, they're getting pushed back. Now, with all that said, he is explosive. He started to see more passing game usage last week, and he's playing nearly 80% of the snaps. So the role here gives him a safe floor. I think Etienne is a fine play, not a priority play, but a definitely a fair price tag. I just like other players around him, and we'll get to those players right now. Let's talk about Zach Wilson, who's expected to start on this short week of Thursday game again over Mike White. Zach Wilson's just $9,800, and if you follow the content, anytime a quarterback is under 10000 on a showdown slate, yeah, you really have to consider that. And Wilson this past week, look, in real life, he wasn't good. He barely completed 50% of his passes, 18 for 35. But for fantasy, he got there. Over 300 yards, he had two touchdowns. And Zach Wilson last week, across every single quarterback in the league, was tied with Josh Allen for five big-time throws. According to PFF, big-time throws are hitting tight windows, usually downfield, difficult throws that you ended up completing. Zach Wilson co-led with Josh Allen. Coming into this game, he had just three big-time throws on the entire season. So sure, he wasn't accurate in this one, but he was making some of his best throws, and now he faces a bottom five secondary. There's a lot of negative media on Zach Wilson, which actually gives you in the DFS standpoint in the player prop market better numbers to be taking him. So I'm taking Zach Wilson here. I would argue that he is the best play above the $9,000 price tag. Emphasis on above $9,000 because right at $9,000, I have no idea why Garrett Wilson is this price. Garrett Wilson yet again is having another good game with Zach Wilson returning. He earns nine targets. He goes for 98 yards, just misses the bonus for 100 plus yards and very quietly is putting up an elite season. Look, he ranks 24th in target rate, but keep in mind, Zach Wilson earlier in the year was brutal. Target rate is how many times you're targeted per route your ability to earn targets for a rookie to be in the top 40 is great he is in the top 24 and might finish the season top 20 by the way that he's playing again i have no idea how garrett wilson is this cheap especially since christian kirk is a lot more expensive than him and garrett wilson i would say right now in fantasy and in real life is a better wide receiver garrett wilson at nine thousand dollars flat just immediately looks like the best captain option in my opinion and arguably the best overall play on the slate he is a top five projected player for me but he's priced at just nine thousand dollars okay so we've covered all these dudes above like the eight thousand dollars the seven thousand dollar price tag we need to start talking about some value so let's introduce some in the form of marvin jones at five thousand dollars flat who is still the clear wide receiver three for the jacksonville jaguars as you can see right here he played 46 snaps last week 66 percent of the snaps and he had a good game he earned six targets in this one so for a wide receiver in this offense earning six targets and being just five thousand dollars flat we gotta like him right well not so fast before this game he had just four total targets in his previous four games and he's been bad this year i've enjoyed marvin jones in the past but look he's older he's above 30 years old he ranks 71st in target rate we just said Garrett Wilson, anything top 40, top 24 is great. He is just 71st. And his ability, yards per route run, what he's doing after the catch, it's not good. 84th. Anything, and this is declining over the last two years. That's usually a trend that shows, yeah, you don't have as much burst, you're not getting open, and just five red zone targets this year. There's not much upside with Marvin Jones. So even though he's $5,000 flat here, I'm just not interested. He'll probably come in somewhere around 24 to 28% owned in general. And in my opinion, that's probably two times as much as he should be owned. Now, there is a situation on the slate that I want to be targeting because this player is coming in way too low on then he's right up there with Garrett Wilson as the best play in the slate but he's cheaper but before we get to that we must talk about the best player props on the slate and in my opinion right now for what's available right now more props will come up but what's currently available I'm taking Trevor Lawrence under 229 and a half passing yards. I have him for about 212 and Garrett Wilson over 58.5. I have him in the 70s. So I took those two props on prizepicks.com. They have the best props, the most offerings, in my opinion, that I've seen anywhere in the market, the earliest in the week. And now for the holiday season, if you want a free bet up to hundred bucks, you put in 25, you get 25. You put in hundred, you get hundred right back. Well, check the link in the description to prizepicks.com and just use the code SAL22. Now for that situation I was talking about, it resides in the backfield for the Jets where the running backs are priced right next to each other. Zonovan Knight, $7,000. He left the last game. We have to track his stats 
status. He's going to be questionable for Thursday, but early on, it looks like he's going to play again, though. Track the status and Michael Carter at $6,400. Now, this past week, it was actually Michael Carter who played more snaps. Again, Zonovan Knight left the game. Zonovan Knight would have played more snaps. It was about near 50-50, but Carter played more snaps and he by far ran more routes, 24 to about eight for Zonovan Knight. Now, that said, it was a game where they played from behind the Jets. So Carter, as a healthier in this game, pass catching back, it makes more sense that he ran more routes. But this game, just a couple of points spread difference. Expect more Zonovan Knight if he's healthy. So we have some interest in Carter. We'll get more if Zonovan Knight is out. But what about Zonovan Knight himself, who's more expensive? He's $7,000 flat. Is he somebody we want to be over the field on? Well, in his last game, he didn't play that well. He was also injured. But look, he faced the Lions. And as you can see from my tweet, the Lions were holding guys like Saquon and Dalvin Cook below 25 yards, Travis Etienne just 54 yards. This is all in the last five weeks. They've been a top five defense the last six weeks. And now that is specifically against the run. But during this time that Zonovan Knight's been a starter over the last month, he leads every single running back in broken tackle rate per touch. Having nearly five broken tackles per game during this time, again, leads all running backs, including guys like Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs, who are known for breaking tackles. And despite playing less snaps to Michael Carter and being injured, he actually saw 13 of the 17 carries last week. So expect in a closer game this week when he's healthier, 15 plus touches on the ground alone. I currently have Zonovan Knight projected for 11.7 points, making him out of anybody above $3,000. This column right here, 1.67. That's his point per dollar value. It's higher than anybody else above the kickers and defenses, which means I like him a lot. And he is arguably the best play on the overall slate. If he's indeed healthy and out there, if he's out, well, a lot more ownership will come in on Michael Carter, but he'll be a solid play. So those are some mid tier guys. We need more value, especially if we're not going to play Marvin Jones. Well, can we find that value in $3,000 flat CJ Ozoma, who last week was a top five tight end, but he did it on just two targets. And both of those targets went for touchdowns. You see, nothing changed about his role. He still played 15 less snaps than Tyler Conklin was still the backup tight end here. Ran just, if we scroll over here, these are his routes run. Ran just 11 routes to 22 for Tyler Conklin. So he was just a backup tight end who kind of got lucky with a two touchdown game. Right now, in my opinion, I don't want CJ Ozoma. Where the value is going to come from is if these Jets wide receivers and Denzel Mims and or Corey Davis are injured, a lot more value opens up. Mention Corey Davis, who was just $5,600. Yes, if he's active, I want him because he's literally top five very quietly in yards per reception. How much he's being targeted downfield? 17.7 yards per reception. That's a lot of upside, especially for a showdown sleep. But if he's out, it opens up roles for guys like $800 Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith last week, once Denzel Mims missed the game, played a lot more snaps. He actually played a third most snaps, two more than Braxton Berrios, and he had a good game. He earned five targets, four catches for 77 yards. And look, Jeff Smith, he's an athlete. It's just never really translated to the NFL, but he has top 10% speed of all time, really good bursts and agility, and he has good size. He's a bigger receiver in terms of height, especially in the red zone that helps, and downfield upside. He's basically a worse version of Corey Davis and Denzel Mims, but plays that same role. So if those guys are out, Jeff Smith below $1,000 becomes the value play on the slate. But we can't ignore Braxton Berrios. The issue would be that he's double the price point of Jeff Smith, but as we showed right here, Braxton Berrios played 27 snaps last week. He ran 18 routes, and he also saw five targets in this game. And don't forget that these are his game logs the last two years with the Jets. He has a connection with Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson likes him. 55 and 65 targets in his last two seasons is meaningful. Now, the problem is he's pretty far down this depth chart. He needs a couple injuries to happen, and then he's still likely behind Jeff Smith in the pecking order as the wide receiver four. He's somewhat in play, but if he's going to be more than Jeff Smith, I'd rather just go down to Jeff Smith. Now, again, keep in mind, this is only viable. These dudes are only viable if Corey Davis and Denzel Mims are out. If one of those guys are in, they're the guy that I want to play in the order of Davis and then Mims, then Jeff Smith. And if those dudes play, it'll be difficult to find value. I mean, you have Darren Arnold running like seven routes as there's a backup tight end. No, thank you. Denzel Mims, yes, we said if he's in and Corey Davis will be taking Denzel Mims the most. Then there's guys like Jermichael Hastie, who are the clear backup playing just 20% of the snaps, seeing just two opportunities last week for the Jags. I don't want him as ETN is the main dude. But one guy we can mention if Corey Davis plays and now you're losing all these Jets wide receivers would be Jamal Agnew. Jamal Agnew is $2,000. That is expensive. But last week he had scheme production. He only played 10 snaps, but on those 10 snaps, three targets and three carries. He's explosive. He's dynamic. He has big play upside Jamal Agnew and they scheme him in, which is not something that a lot of cheap showdown plays get are like two to four scheme plays a game. Now, it's not the greatest thing in the world to hope for two carries and one or two targets out of a $2,000 player, but we might be left to do that. He is last in the pecking order, but he would be the best play below $3,000 if these Jets wide receivers don't open up because Corey Davis plays. Now, with that said, I would say this range right here with the kickers defenses and Tyler Conklin is where you want to target for all your value. Because as you can see from my value rankings, Darren Arnold, he's only up here because he's projected for any points at a cheap price tag. Ignore that. But after that, Tyler Conklin, Jets defense, Jags defense, Riley Patterson, all these dudes are in my top value because yes, they're cheap, but they're projected for decent points. Conklin would be my favorite option here because he obviously has touchdown upside as a receiving option. So this appears to be the value that is most likely to open up. I think the kickers are strong plays. I prefer both defenses and Tyler Conklin if we're looking for value below $5,000. Elijah Moore is also there as well as we discussed earlier. Now, those projections are just a small piece of the puzzle. You obviously need an optimizer. 
advisor to make sure you're setting your rules up right and you definitely need ownership so you can know the leverage plays right the game theory part of all this to win money how highly owned your players knowing where to dodge avoid and take lower own plays so if you want to see the ownership and a whole lot more to help you stop losing and winning more well you can check it out down below in the dfs blueprint not just for this sport not just for this slate but all of the main slates for the sports that i cover nba ufc pga and of course nfl right now in season so if you want to join thousands of people right now using the dfs blueprint well you can click the link in the description to learn more best of luck on this thursday slate and happy holidays to all you beautiful people